So we are here on this um, special event day with uh, Glenn Lucas at the Tormac uh, Sharpening Studio. Yes, that's um, correct. And has been a really fun day, very inspirational, and um, thank you so much for putting this on. Thank you. For uh, what's your name? My name is Sebastian. Uh, I'm a country sales manager at Tormac. I'm responsible for, I say, in sloppy way, it's Western Europe, and then I have Australia, New Zealand, and South Africa. So a bit of a bit different countries, but uh, mainly French speaking. We have Tormac at home, but. Um, for people who don't know much about the sharpening uh, system, what makes it unique and, and uh, good? Uh, first of all, it's a quality machine. Uh, so it, it's a seven year warranty on the machine, but it will last more than 20 years of the machine. Uh, then also, we also put a lot of uh, effort into innovation. So we have 16 different patterns, uh, uh, patterned solutions. So it makes it the whole sharpening system and it makes it easy for people without that much training or experience to get a very good and re sharp result. But when I look at this closely, I see marks like this. And they go all the way around, but there is no, there's no torn grain, so the cut is smooth. And it's here, and then it stops. Maybe one here. So as I make the cut, and I bring the handle away, it brings the tool a little out of the wood. It goes forward, out of the wood, it goes forward. So are your main customers um, woodworkers or, or what is your target group? It's, it's come, it's, it, it depends from country to country as well. Uh, I would say that historically we have, we have been very big within uh, wood turners, but there are not that many wood turners. We see more and more, uh, what do you call them, knife enthusiasts coming along being interested in, in uh, people are putting more money in expensive knives uh, and therefore they need a good system to sharpen the knives as well. Uh, in some countries it's a lot of carpenters who need sharp chisels and so on. So it's, and we also have a machine for the professional chefs. So it depends on country but uh, we have a, an, and our latest machine is for hunters so we're really trying to, to uh, different segments. Yeah, so, so this machine that we have here right now, is this um, your biggest machine? or? Yes, actually, it's, uh, this is the biggest machine, which is called the T8. And mm -hmm. We have uh, done shopping systems for over 40 years, uh, but we almost always have had a bigger machine and a smaller machine down there. Uh -huh. and that's also a great machine tool for the obvious pads. Uh, only the top is in sync, the rest is in plastic. We, we have this one at home, we love it, we are really happy with it. Um, I think it's the, pretty much the exact same except for we have a natural stone on our yeah. stuff. Um, is this what you would recommend to, to even people who yeah. don't work professionally? Or? It, it depends completely on you, your use. Uh, this is uh, much more stable than the T4. So if you're having bigger tools, shopping bigger tools, or bigger jigs, like the real jig is quite big, this is more stable. Uh, the T4 is a great machine if you're only going to sharpen knives. The good thing is that we have a good renome and the machines have a very high second-hand value. So if you would buy a T4 and you would realize that I need a T8, yeah. you would get quite a good amount of money back from selling a second-hand. Or like Glenn Lucas said today, you need two Tormex. Yeah. <laughs> Min minimum two Tormex. Is, minimum, uh, yeah. yes. is the side that I don't use to cut with, it's the right hand side, so it does not cut, but I will put it up here. Then I take away the burr, I forgot the word already, Rue. Rue. <laughs> yes, I make movements like this, I just twist my body. So it pushes into the side grain.
beginning uh, with the noise. So it's just a little chunk. But I don't think there's much more in there. But it's a good idea to stop and look in case there is something because if it breaks away, it can hit your hand. Well, first of all, thank you so much for the knowledge and, and everything, the presentation. That You're was very welcome. Very inspirational. So, um, maybe you could, just real quick, we have a big audience and I'm sure they, um, they love seeing you creating something so beautiful out of, um, out of wood. We love wood as a, as a resource, we love working with wood. And how, how old were you when you started and what made you start? I started wood turning when I was 16, but uh, my love of wood started before that, I think when I was about five or six six years of age, um, I got for Christmas a carpentry tool set mm. and um, at the time I was inspired by my grandfather and this, this, other, this older man that lived close by that used to make us ornaments and toys out of, out of, um, out of wood and having seen him sharpen a hand plane and a woodworking chisel and seeing what he created. I just wanted to, to do that myself. And, uh, but I've been I've been turning for the last 30 years, and um, so when I started to to uh, create turn pieces, I brought them into school. I used to sell them to uh, the woodworking teachers and other teachers in the school. Then I got involved in some local exhibitions. Um, and very quickly I realized I could make a little bit of money out of wood. Mm. And when I left school I never thought for a moment that I would be a, a professional wood turner. Um, I went off and I trained as a cabinet maker. Mm. And a few years into making furniture, um, the business I worked for closed down. And then they reopened, they closed one more time. And I thought I, I want to, to run my own business from now on. It becomes very evident hearing you speak and share that you love what you do and, and that you have really followed your dream, followed your passion and uh, we are a lot about that uh, on our channel as well, that you have certain gifts and desires and dreams within you and you'll be only as good as you can be and happy if you follow those and, and develop those. And I think there are a lot of people who do things like this as a hobby wondering or doubting that you could actually earn money with this. So, so is it hard to become a professional wood turner? It is hard. Um, I've been lucky enough that so many doors have opened up with pure chance all along throughout the years. For example, for most of my career, uh, 25 years, I've been just making bowls for, for the shops in America, all over Europe, Ireland, England. Um, but then along came the recession. And the recession hit Ireland badly back about 10, 12 years ago. And overnight, you know, people were making the decision, do I pay my mortgage or buy a Glen Lucas Bowl? Glen Lucas Bowl was not, was not on the priority list. Um, so I had to have a big look at my business at that time. Uh, for a few years I was quite concerned, for not for a few years, for a few months I was quite concerned. Um, but people asked me, was I interested in teaching? I was. A lot of people in Ireland lost their jobs at that time. So they had time for wood turning classes. And, um, I went over to America to do bowl signs, to visit many of the stores who sold my bowls and I would just sit there with the pyrography pen and just writing information on the base and writing my name or whatever they wanted. And um, while I was there I decided to visit a wood turning conference in Utah and some of the people knew who I was and knew about my production background and asked me was I interested in coming back the following year to demonstrate, which I, I accepted. Um, but when I went back, the invitations kept coming. Wow. And I realized then it would be better to have a range of DVDs, to mm. have some other things that I could sell right. while I was out demonstrating, so that I wasn't just being paid for my day, I had yeah. other things to go with it. So that brought on, um, I suppose an interest in filmmaking, we've 
made uh, six DVDs available from our website. I have um, a range of tools produced in England by Hamlet and those are now sold all over the world. Mm -hmm. I've worked on some television shows mm -hmm. and we have been teaching from our own school in Ireland for about 10-12 years um, and we just started to put the foundations down for a brand new school yes. op opening yeah. um, next year. So yeah, I was just going to ask you about this, so, so people can come and visit you and, and attend classes? Absolutely, we have people booked in for classes from South Korea, um, from uh, New Zealand, Australia, Brazil, Caribbean, all over Europe. Um, last year we had about 440 class places at our at our home, 220 from overseas. And uh, so it's great that the world uh, it, it's hearing about what we're, yeah. we have to offer. Yeah. And it's wonderful for our local community to bring all yes. of this yeah, um, extra business into the area. Yeah, I, I really loved how you um, emphasized that you try to focus on, on local or Irish uh, wood varieties. That is really important. I get emails all the time uh, from people uh, who live overseas and they want to do business with me selling you know, olive wood and all of these mm -hmm. different um, exotic species. And the answer is always no. I mean, part of my sales pitch is working with native materials. Yeah. Big part of it is using renewable resources. Yes. One of my proudest things is that I've never felled a tree. I have never taken a chainsaw and put a tree down. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to say I couldn't, but I wouldn't because um, I don't need to. Mm. We get a lot of storms um, around this time of the year in Ireland, so these big old beech trees come down, they've reached the end of their life. Um, they've got a lot of wonderful color and I can just give them a new life in the shape of a bowl or a platter or a mm. lamp or something else. Yeah, yeah. so that, that is where you buy your wood from mainly, like arborists or, or is it? It's normally, uh, my main source would be farmers, farmers and uh, there are several um, tree surgeons that I deal with and uh, so I don't have to look for wood, it sort of finds me mm -hmm. and um, I suppose the more I get my word out there about what we're doing, what we're offering, the more people find me with trees. So yeah. um, I don't go far. Most of my wood comes from about a five mile radius. Wow. And um, I don't own a trailer. I don't have to collect it. It just it yeah. just turns up in my yard, which wow. is wonderful. That is amazing. And, and you have the whole closed cycle, the wood shavings you use for heating your facilities? And well, the wood shavings, we don't actually heat with the wood okay. shavings because they're wet. I've been looking ah. into trying to, uh, there's several machines, brigat bricketing presses that will compress them. Right. The problem with that is that our shavings are wet to start mm -hmm. with. So you have to dry them. Uh, they have to be milled into a smaller form so that okay. they can be compressed. Mm -hmm. So it would create so much energy to, yes. to get them so yeah. that they could be uh, um, burnt. But we use, a lot of them go for bedding cattle, mm -hmm. um, horses, Perfect. provided it's not. Yeah, we use wood shavings and wood chips for um, bedding our cattle. So, yeah, so yeah. it's wonderful for yeah. that. Um, and we also use it to suppress the weeds on our plants. Yeah, so it, awesome. there's no waste. Yeah, yeah. it's perfect. So just to give us all an idea, now you travel a lot, you teach a lot, but um, how many bowls and plates do you produce in a year? Well, it's gone from, it used to be around 3,000 bowls and platters every year. And, and that's just you, you don't have like, that's just me. Yeah. yeah, that's just me, but my yeah. business is changing all the time. Yeah. Um, so now it's down to about 1,000 bowls a year, but a big portion of my year for, for quite a few years has been traveling. Yeah. Last year I was in nine different countries wow. teaching. Uh, I took 54 flights, so <laughs> I was sort of glad to, to yeah. uh, come back to Ireland. Come back to Ireland. <laughs> um, my plans for the future would be to travel a little less, maybe um, do some of the conferences around Europe, um, just so that I'm me reaching a, a large number of people. But my main focus will be teaching from home mm -hmm. and. Um, not traveling so much. I would like to work on more uh, YouTube content and also Instagram content. So uh, 
what's wonderful about that is I'm bringing a completely new audience yeah. um, into my business. You know? And that, that's right now probably the best way to follow you is if, if you guys check out um, his Instagram or YouTube channel. Yes. Um, the Instagram, you, you post stories, you said, when that's you That's it, at Lucas Woodturning is my Instagram yeah. we'll, account. We'll post the um, accounts in the description below. Yeah. Um, and, and otherwise, if, if the best way for people to learn more about you or purchase your DVDs or book a class or something that all goes through your website. Have a look at our website because yeah. we have quite a few um, YouTube videos on our website. Mm -hmm. There's actually a feed from Instagram that just appears there. Mm -hmm. And um, but we have we have several I would call them ins inspirational videos yes. on YouTube. They're not so technical. The technical stuff is in the DVDs. Yeah. Um, but it just inspires people to to take up turning or to mm -hmm. just to even appreciate what goes into yeah. the turning. Do you have a speaking schedule that people can see which country you're going to go to, if they can meet you there? That's on our website. On the website, so we, yeah. Uh, at the moment, we're, we work a few years in advance normally. Yeah. There's quite a lot of invitations coming in there. And uh, I think on our website it's listed as Glen on Tour. So it's got a list of where I've been and where I'm going to. Well, that's perfect. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Glen. You're very well. We were really inspired. We loved the work and hope to see you soon. We. Actually, my wife and I uh, would love to visit someday in Ireland. I've, it has always been a dream of mine. I'm passionate about sheep and cattle. And we got lots of that. So and have, rain. You need to be passionate yeah. about rain as well. Yeah, I, I, I grew up in one of the rainiest areas in Germany. Okay. So, <laughs> you know what it's like. I, yes, yes. But um, hopefully someday we'll be able to come by okay. and see you there. Thank you, you know, very much. Thank you so much.